Well, good evening, Cross Culture. It is time to pray. We're looking at a big week this week. A lot of questions are being asked, and a lot of people are wondering exactly what's going on. And uh, I get questions from time to time, what I think or what I feel, and, and here's truly where I'm at. And maybe this is, is different for others right now, but um, to be completely honest, I'm encouraged. All right, this year has been a year of strategy. It's been a year of resistance. It's, it's been a year of pushback. It's been a year of learning. And things are being sorted out. 2020 really was a revelation as far as what people truly wanted, what they, what they wanted to understand about life, what they wanted to be told about life, what they were willing to pursue in their, in their, their head and their heart as far as what was reality and what wasn't. And uh, 2021 is going to play out. And so here's the interesting thing about what happens in these seasons, okay? God comes to the rescue in many, many situations. And sometimes you see it play out in the public eye where you see it all. And at other points, he comes for those who have been paying close attention to who he is and what he's doing. And that is available to everyone that wants it. But the interesting thing is that at no point does God allow us to remain naive or ignorant, if we truly are designed, desiring to grow into who God has called us to be, one, we stop looking to men for approval. We start looking to God in each and every moment to say what pleases him and what, what truly about him in this moment and am I representing. And so as that begins to challenge your heart, am I behaving like my father? Am I living like my savior? If I, am I loving like Jesus loved? Am, am I praying? Am I putting myself before God when big seasons come? And so that's why we keep doing this. You'll notice in the life of Jesus, before any big significant thing went on, where was he? He was alone with the Father. So tonight, obviously, we have a big week this week as far as our nation, but it's a blip in time. It's significant to us because we see what's right in front of us. But as it relates to the eternity that, that we embrace and the reality of who Jesus is, this is, this is a blip on the map. And I'm not making light of the struggles that could appear or that are appearing in one way or another. But the things that we do understand right now, the things that we could pray for right now, is that we are a divided nation because God has not been first. Truth. And in many ways, he has not been first in the church. And he's definitely not been first in the way that we've conducted business in our country. So what do we begin to pray about? We begin to pray about a house that is divided. We know that the word declares a house divided cannot stand. So we're going to pray for unity tonight. We're going to pray for peace. And we're going to pray for hope. Yes, we are enduring some spiritual things right now. But um, God has not changed who he is. He's not changed how the pattern so that he has laid out will lead to success. He's, or, uh, success. He's not... He's not changed how the patterns he laid out will lead to blessing. They will all do the same thing they have always done. But it takes people of character, of persistence, of constant pursuit of God to find him and know him no matter how difficult the season is. Remember the story of um, the prophet of God was sent and he confronted a wayward king and the wayward king's wife. And she had prophets that were dedicated to other gods. And even after a great victory, she, uh, on, the, on behalf of the prophet of God, as it related to the ending of many of the prophets of Baal, she sent word to him that she was going to kill him. And because this struck him, he had these two parallels, right? Massive victory. The people of, of the nation rose up and chose God over, over a false god. But yet here was this one who was devoted to, to herself and to her own means and to the end, she remained steadfast and solid in her rebellion. And the prophet of God comes up against this and she has not moved. Even though the miracles were witnessed, even though you know the, the fire came down and consumed the altar and everything else, it, it did not change the way she perceived reality. And you're gonna see that. You're gonna see people incredibly dedicated to themselves. This is not a defeat as it relates to who God is. It's not a defeat because people rebel against God and people reject God. It's not a defeat. Each man is given the opportunity to choose. 2020 was about choosing. It was about choosing. 100%.
What do we value more than anything? And when we value God, we prioritize God. And when we prioritize God, we prioritize his house. We never claim that his house is anything but essential. It's time for a reverence and a fear of God to return to the hearts of the believers. We've become far too comfortable with deciding what God thinks as opposed to finding out what God thinks. So let's pray tonight. You ready? Lord, we come before you. We embrace you for all that you are. You know the challenges that we are facing individually. You know the challenges we are facing within our communities, within our city, within our churches, within our county, within our state, within our country. Lord, you know there is a great amount of division. There is a great amount of confusion and anger and worry. People have become disenfranchised. They become depressed. But Lord, in many ways, we have been dealt with very poorly. We've been mistreated and lied to at many levels. And God, these divisions have occurred because the wrong people hold the information. So Lord, give us strength to begin to bridge that gap. Begin to, give us strength to begin to pray over the issues that we are facing as a country. Why are people so angry? Why are they so disenfranchised? Lord, you know. Father, you understand that even as we present the greatest love that has ever been known to man, and that is that Jesus came and died for our sins, not all will accept it. But Lord, what can we be in the midst of this? Your word declares that, that we will be known by the way that we love one another. So Lord, have we been loving? Has the church been unified in its direction? Lord God, is, have we as the church given life the priority it needs, given unity the priority it needs, given discipleship the priority it needs? Lord, are we speaking with one voice, which is the voice of Christ? Or are we fractured and broken because egos are in the way? Do we understand the consequences, Lord, of remaining broken? Do we understand the judgment that will befall us if we do not come to a place of restoration and repentance? So, O oh Lord, for the church, we pray tonight. We pray that it becomes a unifying force within our country and that it begins to speak peace into every portion of our nation, no matter race, color, or creed, that it encounters God, that the truth of your word would go forward and that there would be a depth of understanding and a patience that the people of God would not only encounter, but they would begin to embody as they, be, as they are your hands and feet within this nation and within the world. Lord, what, what we have had our attention on has not been the things that you have called us to. Lord, this year has been much about resistance and isolation and depression and wounding. But Lord, I pray for a season that the floodgates will begin to open. Many will question as to the time and season. Many, many will cheer, choose fear over fact and fear over faith. Lord, but you are raising up men, even now, that are beginning to take key positions to speak of peace and of harmony rooted in your spirit, Lord God, that all would benefit, that the floodgates would begin to open and rest and restoration would come, that the opportunities that have been robbed from people by those who desire to feed off their effort, by those, Lord Jesus, who lie and cheat and steal, Lord, that you would begin to reconcile the books, that you would begin to weigh them in the balances, Lord, that there would be an opportunity for them to do the right thing, but Lord, ultimately, that the right thing would be done with or without them. Father, we thank you that you are a God of justice and that nothing is hidden from your sight, that the hope that we have in you will not leave us ashamed, but those who reject you, God, will find more than shame. They will find an unceasing, unrelenting vacuum. They will find hopelessness, Lord. Hopelessness, Lord. Father, I pray that this is not so for them, that each man and each woman is allowed their choice. Lord, I pray even now that the forces that would desire to rob the church of its peace, those things that are seen, those things that are unseen, Father, that you would make them all seen, that every bit of darkness would have light shined into it and every plot and plan 
would be revealed. Everything, Lord God, every false balance, every false weight, no matter when and where it would, was used, Lord, would be revealed. Lord, anywhere that people have been robbed of their voice, Lord, as they have sought to choose the things that, that they were guaranteed the ability to choose, Father, that they would be revealed. We trust in your plan and we trust in your way. Lord, every time you raised up a prophet, every time you raised up a savior, if you will, Lord, one who would come to rescue his people, and even times he would rescue them and they would fight them. They would see the suffering. They would see the depravity of the place that they were in. They would see the slavery and the abuse. And they would choose what was known because they were afraid of freedom. They were afraid of the effort. They were afraid of what it was costing them, Lord God. They were afraid of the things that were uncertain, Lord, and they would rather choose abuse over uncertainty. I pray for the soul of man, specifically within our nation, God, that bravery would return, that clarity would return. Lord, those who have felt maligned, those who have felt abused and have chosen bitterness over improvement, who have chosen isolation over communion, who've chosen at points to allow themselves, Lord, to engage in a downward spiral. Those whose eyes are painted with darkness, who desire to see nothing but what looks like them, Father, that they would see the beauty of the diversity of your plan in this, that you have a plan for each individual and it is to prosper them. Lord, where hatred has taken root, Father, I pray that it is uprooted. I pray that peace begins to rule. Lord, those who see no point, who see no future, that their eyes would be open to the possibilities, that their heart would be wrangled free from darkness. Lord, begin to send those who are crying in the midst of the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord, that the hearts of the fathers would be turned back to the sons, that families would learn to reconcile, that repentance would be regular, that I'm sorry would not be such a hurdle, Lord God. For we have all missed things. We have all fallen short. But what opportunity do we have for repair if we are not even willing to admit the wrong? Lord, let it begin in the house of God. Let it begin firmly, Lord, and sternly, O oh God. That we begin to see with the eyes that you have called us to see with. We begin to hear with the ears that you have called us to hear with. Lord, I pray that the church, the programmed church, is done. I pray that it's done. I pray that our churches once again have altars. I pray that uh, once again that a church begins to speak in a fashion that people have a choice to truly know you and understand you. Forgive us, Lord God, where we have gone with things. Forgive us, Lord God, for our misunderstanding of your intent and purpose. Let rest and hope once again return to the house of God. Let your spirit reside with those houses who have stood. And Father, begin the correction necessary in those who were unwilling. I pray for a restoration, God of pastors. That their eyes would be focused on you that their hearts would be turned away from anything that is not of you, that there would be a burning passion within them to see the lives of the lo those you have called them to love come to the fullness that you have desired, to see the fruit of your spirit in operation, to find joy in reading your word and teaching what it says, O oh God. Let them abandon their own interpretation of things and get back to the basics.
God, that we would not be overly wise with our words, but we would teach in a way that brings understanding. And Lord, it is a fearful thing to do at points because it can be rejected. But that we would speak clearly and with purpose. Lord, we pray for our government, our politicians. For those who are acting in accordance to your word, cover them and bless them. Protect their households and their families. For those who are on the side of life, Father, and on the side of what is good and pure, support them and strengthen them. But Lord, your word is clear. Those who will abandon you, you will abandon them. For those who are not of you, will claim to be of you at a point, but Lord, you declare that when it comes to judgment, you will say firmly away, I never knew you. For those who have promised to uphold the law and do not do so. Father, you will not stand with them. Liars and cheats and those who deceive. Lord, it is clear your hand will oppose them. Tonight we pray, O oh God, for a breakthrough in our nation. For clarity to come. For peace to be had. We thank you, O oh God, that you are faithful and that you are mighty. We know that your hand is moving. We know that your eyes are upon those who keep their eyes upon you. Lord, that you sent your son to die for all. But your son declared that many are called, but few answer. That the way is traveled by few. Let us be grateful, Lord, when you discipline us, because it is out of love that you do it. Let us be at rest when you challenge us. When you put your finger upon those things in our heart that must change and that must move. Let us be at peace. Let our hope not be taken by the actions and the attitudes of men. But even in, the amidst, even in the midst of oppression, even in the, amidst, in the midst of abuse, Lord, that we would settle on you and you alone. That we would be encouraged in you and by you. For this existence is very short. It is just a breath, a blink of an eye. And all will encounter you. Let us keep our focus on the fact that your kingdom is unshakable. It is unmovable. Yes, things change in our lives and they change rapidly at points. But never you. Never you. You've never failed us. And for that, we are beyond grateful. We have nothing by which to repay you for what you've done the blessings you have given, the grace that you have shown, the patience and the mercy that you have extended. I have nothing to repay you with, but I will give you my life. I will give you my obedience. We thank you, Lord, for you can be found in the same place again and again. You do not change your mind and the way that man changes theirs. Your standards are set. They are the same. And in you there is peace and hope. Do not fear, child of God. He is faithful. And his love endures forever. Lord, I pray over each individual here tonight that's watching, each that will watch as they pray over their families, as they pray over their nation, as they read the word, Lord, that they would know, that they would hear you, that they would encounter you, that you would renew their strength daily, that they would be your people, living your way, ministering in this world, 
for this time and this season, Father. You have called us to be alive and working. Give us the strength, O oh God. Let our efforts please you. Let them be ministering efforts. But I pray this, O oh Lord, set the house of God in order. Let judgment begin with the house of God. We thank you. We praise you in your name. Amen. All right, y'all. Keep your eyes on God. Men say and do all kinds of things. They do. But your hope's not in men. What does Paul say? He says, follow me as I follow Christ. What does that mean? If I'm not following Christ, then what? I wouldn't be a great person to follow. You hold fast to the things that you've been taught in the last number of years. For those that have not been part of our church, you're most welcome. As soon as we're open, you know, as far as in-person services, you are most welcome. But the teaching that we do is about living your life daily in a very practical manner and understanding why it is that we encounter the hurdles that we encounter and what trips us up, what motivates us, what causes us anger, how to deal with shame, how to deal with, with conviction, how to deal with our neighbor. These are the things that I want you to be praying on. Lord, who am I going to be tomorrow? Who am I going to be Tuesday? Who am I going to be Wednesday? Definitely who are you going to be on Thursday? Your Father in heaven watches. He closed the lily of the valley. He knows when a sparrow falls. He knows the number of hairs on your head. This is the time. This is the season. I'm encouraged. If that encourages you, praise God. All right? But just hang in there. Trust and obey, all right? I'll be praying for you. Love you guys. See you soon.